Good afternoon. Welcome to the online course on high pressure physics. Today, uh, I will give lecture, second lecture on the simulations. So in the pre previous lecture, we uh, learned uh, what is the importance of uh, doing simulation and particularly classical molecular dynamic simulations. Uh, what are the information that we can uh, extract from uh, this simulation, how this uh, simulation can be uh, used uh, for complementing the experimental uh, measurements. Uh, in today's lecture, we will be basically learning uh, quantum mechanical method of doing the simulation. Uh, in the last lecture, we know that when uh, we do the classical uh, molecular dynamic simulation, we require a force field and uh, that has uh, that is a basically very important thing and it's a non trivial job to uh, basically define a, a potential which can work in uh, various situations and uh, of course the results depend upon the uh, potential and if uh, one can uh, basically compute the pot uh, potential or compute the various quantity from the quantum mechanics, then certainly uh, uh, one can do the simulation in various uh, uh, environment or you can say with the varying a thermodynamic uh, parameter, still this uh, potential will be transferable and we can expect to uh, get good results. Okay, so uh, uh, as we discussed, we can do uh, several uh, uh, several uh, basically uh, simulations to uh, basically define the structural transition pressure, structural stability. Of course, one can do these calculations for vibrational uh, property. And uh, in this lecture, we will be basically uh, studying uh, uh, how we can do uh, basically electronic structure calculation and how this calculation helps in uh, case of uh, doing a measurement at high pressure and uh, maybe in the last uh, I will say a few words about uh, uh, structural prediction. Okay, uh, so in this lecture we will be basically uh, learning a uh, basic methodology of doing uh, this quantum mechanical calculation uh, based on pseudo potential and play uh, method. There are various methods uh, by which one can do uh, this uh, simulations based on a different approximation and different theory. Uh, so for the periodic system, this uh, pseudo potential and flame wave uh, based approach is uh, much more convenient and we will be discussing that one. Before that, uh, we, we will uh, basically try to build various uh, theoretical aspects so that uh, uh, when we are doing calculation, we come to know that uh, what are the important parameter that one need to uh, take into account while doing this simulation to get uh, uh, basically uh, accurate results because uh, this uh, one need to play with a lot of parameters so and here is the outline of uh, today's presentation discussion so we, I will start with the electronic ground state and what is the role of bonding and uh, various uh, uh, what are the because of the bonding we can get a different kind of structures when we uh, will define the pressure and volume in terms of energy and then uh, this uh, enthalpy versus pressure curve uh, that can be used to basically define the stability of a particular case then we will build the theoretical background for doing such kind of simulations so starting from a density functional theory then uh, Consham Hamiltonian of, uh, then uh, we will uh, discuss the various kind of exchange and correlation uh, that we can use what are the limitations of those exchange and correlation and uh, how these uh, were improved and then uh, we will uh, discuss uh, the uh, plane wave and pseudo potential methods uh, there are various kind of pseudo potentials that we will discuss in brief and uh, then uh, role of uh, k point sampling for this calculation and in the later stage we will see that uh, how this calculation uh, 
uh, one can use for the structural optimization and uh, how uh, the results uh, which we got from these simulations like equation of state using these branched functional based uh, simulation uh, how we can uh, basically uh, find out the phase transition and based on the total energy or enthalpy calculations uh, what information uh, we can get from the structural extension and how uh, we can uh, basically uh, get a transition packaging uh, mechanism using these uh, calculations. We'll, all these uh, will be explained through uh, example. And of course, we can uh, construct a, a phonon dispersion curve or elastic constant using these uh, uh, calculations. And for comparison with the experimental uh, Raman measurements, one can compute the uh, phonon frequency uh, at the John Center, and also one can compute the non resonant Raman scattering cross, uh, cross section, and then one can uh, associate uh, those uh, uh, cross section with uh, some finite width, and then uh, one can construct the uh, computed Raman non resonant Raman scattering spectra, which can be compared with the experimental Raman spectra, and that can help uh, basically in identifying a new phase at high pressure from uh, uh, Raman scattering measurement. And in the last, uh, I will say a few words about the uh, crystal structure uh, uh, prediction or search, which is uh, the final aim uh, uh, when we are doing the high pressure, the, the stability of a particular structure is limited and at high pressure uh, new structure arises but what will be that that structure uh, nowadays it is uh, uh, possible that uh, that theory uh, can give a, a sort of uh, at those pressure and temperature condition this uh, stable or lowest energy structure so those uh, in some cases these structures uh, can be compared directly with the experiment available and uh, in some cases, these structural search basically uh, drives the research that, uh, and then uh, we can do the experiment and find out uh, indeed those structures are exist. And a priori, one can calculate what will be the its uh, uh, physical property. Like uh, people have worked on uh, superconductivity, and in uh, several cases. Uh, this superconductivity at high pressure is first predicted by the theory, and then later on uh, it is realized uh, in the experiment. And also, one can use theory uh, to basically simulate the situation, which is uh, even difficult uh, using the experiment at a uh, very high pressure, and or maybe doing such experiment at such a high pressure may be difficult. Then. Uh, Theory can provide an insight into uh, basically uh, the stability of those uh, structures at those conditions, or uh, new structure at those uh, conditions can be found out using theory. So we start with the, as we know that uh, the structure of any uh, undense matter system is uh, basically governed by the uh, its electronic structure, or there are various kind of uh, bonding that uh, exist, uh, and uh, depending upon the uh, bonding, its uh, structure will be different. So, if we take an example, let's say we have a closed cell, uh, we uh, closed cell uh, atoms like uh, inert atom, and when they come close, they they interact very weakly, and such kind of uh, atoms form. A, Close back structure like FCC, SCP, or PCC. And uh, if you do have a, again the closed cell with some charge transfer, then we have an ionic crystal, ionic bond, and we get a crystal structure like NaCl, cesium chloride, etc. And uh, another situation is a covalent bond where the, uh, the pairing of uh, electron is done, and that lead to a uh, directional uh, nature of the bond, and which in turn gives the basically a open structure like diamond and graphite. The pressure response of uh, all these system will be uh, quite different. And if you take a metallic bond, then uh, in case of uh, metallic bond, as we know that uh, this conduction electron becomes itinerant and is uh, they spread around the ion. 
So the uh, central point uh, here uh, is that uh, the structure of uh, any material uh, uh, basically depend upon its uh, electronic uh, arrangement or it is governed by the uh, uh, electronic uh, ground state of uh, that system or vice versa. So what we have to do is basically we have to uh, find out uh, what will be the, its uh, electronic structure because that governs the uh, uh, atomic arrangement or atomic structure of the system. And then uh, let's see how we can uh, find out uh, this uh, uh, electronic structure or uh, basically uh, uh, total energy of the system using uh, quantum mechanical system. Before going uh, to this one, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, that stability of this structure at given and, uh, pressure and temperature uh, determines uh, uh, almost all other property of the material. And if you can compute the total energy at, uh, uh, let's say, T is equal to zero uh, as a function of volume, and it is easier to uh, uh, compute this uh, total energy. And there are various fundamental uh, quantities which can be derived from the uh, energy, like you can take a pressure. Pressure is nothing but the uh, uh, first derivative with respect to volume. And uh, you can define the bulk modulus, which is again second derivative of the energy. And all these quantities are defined for uh, a fixed number of atoms and contained in a unit cell volume. And if we can compute this uh, energy, then certainly uh, uh, one can uh, test these uh, theories uh, based, uh, by computing the bulk modulus or equilibrium volume. So the first uh, thing one should do in while doing the uh, calculation is to match the equilibrium volume or bulk modulus at uh, uh, t is equal to zero. And if these these are well reproduced, then only one should go ahead and do the uh, detailed simulation for other uh, physical property, etc. So this this graph gives basically the computed uh, energy with the uh, uh, volume. So one uh, basically uh, one can compute the total energy uh, of the system with varying uh, uh, volume, and you can see uh, in different structure the energy curve will be different, and depending upon. Uh, uh, Basically, energy one can find out uh, which structure will be uh, stable, and it's if you draw a common tangent to these two curves, that gives basically the slope of that uh, curve gives that uh, transition uh, pressure, and one can. Uh, um, so this is an uh, example for the silicon where uh, silicon is simulated total energy is calculated with varying uh, volume in uh, different uh, phases like uh, diamond. BC8, uh, beta 10, etc. And then this calculation can be used to find out the stability of various phase in different uh, density region or in the pressure region. Uh, or one can use a different, uh, uh, instead of using an energy volume, one can use a enthalpy uh, versus a pressure curve and to uh, basically reduce the similar kind of information. So th this is a curve which uh, which is for let's say uh, it's a gallium phosphate. So what you do is basically you compute the enthalpy uh, with respect to uh, your uh, ambient phase or that desired phase. In this case, uh, uh, we have computed the uh, enthalpy with respect to TMCM uh, uh, phase, which we'll discuss later. And you see that uh, when you start at zero pressure, this this has a lower energy. Uh, and uh, we have simulated like uh, two other phases. And if uh, enthalpy of these phases uh, is uh, less than the starting structure, then uh, certainly the, this, this structure is uh, more stable. And in the experiment, there is a possibility that you may not find this uh, stable structure because this structure may be separated by some uh, um, kinetic barrier. But these, these certainly represents the stable structure in these uh, pressure uh, temperature conditions. So if you take this example, uh, so you can say above 50 GPA, uh, this monoclinic CSGL2 type structure should be stable. So uh, what 
what is the point of giving this one is basically if you can compute the enthalpy versus pressure then certain uh, uh, from a, if we have a large number of data set we can uh, compute its enthalpy and total energy and come to know whether that structure will be stable energetically with respect to the uh, ambient structure or not but the thing is uh, how to do these uh, calculations so let's uh, discuss some uh, background about the uh, doing this uh, calculation so if you want to solve the uh, um, uh, basically this uh, problem quantum mechanical then one has to write the hamiltonian and this this gives the hamiltonian of uh, interacting electron and nuclei that is the case in case of uh, uh, condensed matter so if you write the hamiltonian it has a kinetic energy term from the electron then you have a basically uh, electron ion interaction then you have an electron electron interaction then again kinetic energy of ions and the uh, the interaction of ion ion so this gives a complete hamiltonian for the uh, um, you can say many body system or interacting electron and nuclei but uh, and uh, if, if you see it quantum mechanically, uh, mechanically uh, if one can solve the uh, time dependent Schrodinger equation which is given by this equation then one can uh, get all the uh, desired result but it's not uh, easy to do this uh, calculation uh, certainly what how we will proceed is what are the various uh, approximation or simplification that is incorporated so that this uh, uh, Schrodinger equation can be solved uh, and we can get the desired result so we, we are basically trying to build the uh, background how uh, uh, what are the various approximations that, that are involved uh, for doing such kind of uh, simulation so here you can see there are various coordinates the small indices represents the uh, electronic coordinate and uh, capital represents the ionic coordinate so uh, so this this is the basically starting equation that we want to solve but as we know, uh, if, if you see this equation, the mass term here is, is the mass of ion, which is very large. So this term is uh, uh, very small compared to all other terms. And in another term, what uh, one can understand is uh, basically uh, if we can decouple the electronic and uh, nuclear degree of freedom, then uh, then this this is uh, uh, this problem is further simplified and. Uh, how it can be done is basically this is uh, uh, this is uh, this this is known as uh, born oppenheimer uh, approximation and uh, why this is valid is uh, as we know that uh, these electrons are uh, very light compared to the ion and if we consider at instantaneous time uh, these electrons uh, follow quickly to the ion and if we take a snapshot then uh, basically uh, one can uh, separate these uh, two degree of freedom because uh, electrons always follows the uh, ion very rapidly. So uh, one can uh, 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 construct the Hamiltonian and in this case uh, if we write the electronic Hamiltonian the, the, uh, the nuclear coordinate act as a, a parameter in that Hel Hamiltonian and now uh, one can define the motion of the nuclei which is governed by the uh, uh, equation uh, for the electronic ground state this is the similar equation that we uh, learned in the classical thing so this is newton's second law uh, mass of ion acceleration is nothing but the negative uh, gradient of uh, this this is the expectation value of hamiltonian which is nothing minus uh, nothing but a uh, uh, gradient of a potential and this V is the basically potential field which uh, any nuclei experiences due to uh, presence of uh, all other uh, uh, nuclei and uh, uh, in the ground state uh, the potential is given by the solution of uh, basically independent Schrodinger equation so now we have reduced from a uh, time dependent uh, Schrodinger equation to uh, time independent Schrodinger equation or if we can solve this equation then uh, we, we can construct these uh, 
potentials and these potential can be uh, used to basically define the uh, nuclear motion uh, here i would uh, i should mention that uh, these uh, nuclei are uh, quite heavy and these nuclei can be considered uh, classically so uh, what is being done is basically you treat uh, nuclei classically as we uh, did in the last uh, lecture and uh, but the thing is the force which is exerted on these nuclei that comes from the quantum mechanical calculations so uh, the force field we can uh, basically uh, abstract from this uh, you know, this uh, time independent schrodinger equation but how to do that one as uh, this i already mentioned that one this is the classical field in case of classical this field is approximated by the several uh, fields and then one does the calculation so today we are interested in doing a simulation uh, using a quantum mechanics and uh, solving those uh, schrodinger equation so as uh, you know it's almost impossible to solve analytically uh, any many body uh, system and that's why uh, long for the long time this uh, these these were not used for the doing this kind of simulation but then uh, there is a uh, uh, on onberg and cohen in 1964 they gave a density functional theory and it provided some direction that uh, one would be able to do uh, uh, this kind of simulation so let's go a little bit detail into what is the density functional theory because when we uh, talk about uh, doing the simulation always people say that we are doing the dft calculation so what exactly is the uh, density functional theory so uh, basically this is a theory for the correlated many body systems and it was shown they have shown that uh, the density of particle in the ground state of a quantum many body systems play a very special role and this density uh, can be considered as a as a basic variable uh, what it means is basically one can compute the many uh, physical uh, quantity which is a unique functional of uh, ground state uh, density so if we can find out the ground state density then we can uh, compute the various physical properties in another word uh, in DFT, any property of system of many interacting particles can be viewed as a functional of a ground state density, which is a scalar function of the position only. With this one, uh, it is uh, basically it is applicable to any system of interacting particle in external potential, including any problem of electron uh, uh, and a fixed nuclei. And now the Hamiltonian can be written as basically you have a kinetic energy term, then you have an external uh, potential, and this is basically due to all other nuclei, etc. And then this is the electron electron interaction. So, this density functional theory comprises of uh, two theorems, and uh, uh, the first theorem says for any system of interacting particle in an external potential b the potential is determined uniquely except for a constant by the ground state uh, particle density so the central line is the, uh, the potential external potential is uniquely defined by the ground state electron uh, de uh, particle density and the second theorem says uh, a universal functional for the energy in terms of density and r can be defined and it, this is valid for any external potential b for P. For any particular external potential, the ground state energy of a system is a global minimum value of this function. And the density that minimizes the function is the exact ground state density value. So basically, uh, it gives a uh, density function. What do we mean by functional? Because density itself is a function of a position. So the function of function is known as a functional. So uh, basically, uh, on but uh, they, they gave uh, a energy functional which is a function of a density and it, this is the form of a function so what you have is you have a kinetic energy terms then you have a uh, internal energy or you can say hard tree that is electron electron energy and exchange correlation term 
and then you have a, a, a potential uh, external uh, uh, energy term due to the external potential or you can say uh, potential due to the nucleus. But uh, even uh, after this theorem, it is not possible to do uh, this kind of uh, uh, quantum mechanical simulation. The reason being is uh, there was no guide for construction of uh, this functional. Uh, how we can, one can construct this functional and uh, how one can minimize. So this uh, DFT became popular only when uh, uh, there was a theorem uh, by uh, Cohen and Sham. And what they did is basically they mapped original problem of many body system uh, and they replaced this uh, problem to with the auxiliary system uh, which can be solved. So. Uh, what exactly this basically this this is based on two assumptions so first assumption is the exact ground state uh, density can be represented by the ground state density of an auxiliary system of non interacting particle so uh, you are basically mapping uh, interacting particle many body uh, problem to non interacting uh, particle problem the second is Assumption says that auxiliary Hamilton is chosen to have the usual kinetic energy operator that we have in another and an effective local potential acting on electron uh, of spin at uh, point R. So what is being done is basically the many body uh, problem is uh, uh, mapped uh, to uh, many man, man body problem of an interacting uh, particle is uh, basically posed to uh, uh, independent uh, 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 non interacting particle problem and then one can uh, easily solve because uh, one can uh, construct uh, basically starting uh, uh, potential and then one can solve this equation so after this uh, theorem how this modifies is one have uh, basically uh, the, earlier this, that was for the interacting uh, thing and it was difficult to deduce uh, the, the form uh, functional form of uh, uh, this uh, energy functional that is uh, density functional and again this is uh, you have a, a kinetic energy which is uh, independent particle kinetic energy then you have a uh, external uh, and uh, potential due to the external field you have a artery Term that is electron electron interaction, you have ion ion interaction, and then exchange correlation uh, interaction. So let's um, let's move uh, forward. Now these uh, non -elect uh, interacting electrons are moving in a effective uh, potential which is uh, uh, unknown and that is the self consistent so, so basically uh, uh, the external potential is uh, replaced by a uh, uh, self consistent uh, effective potential which is uh, uh, due to the uh, uh, due to the all, uh, other nuclei so you have a uh, self uh, this uh, self consistent potential which nothing but, but the uh, potential term then you have uh, basically the electron electron term and uh, uh, all other energies which which uh, which which doesn't fall in this it's uh, given in uh, this v e x e and that this is known as exchange and uh, correlation potential and uh, and it says that if uh, we exchange correlation potential is known then this problem of non interacting electron can be trivially solved without knowing the kinetic energy function by solving this Schrodinger equation so now you you have simplified this uh, problem to a very simple Schrodinger equation for the uh, non interacting independent part particle the only thing is here which uh, this potential depends on its solution so what what is being done is basically this equation is solved iteratively iteratively means uh, when you start with the, some uh, gas uh, trial wave function and then this uh, uh, this equation is solved and uh, 
based on that that uh, density one can construct the potential uh, cluster from the wave function and construct the density electron density from the electron density within the Poisson's uh, uh, equation one can construct the uh, potential and then again solve the equation so this equation is iteratively uh, solved till uh, this potential and wave function are consistent and here are the some uh, basically uh, interpretation of this uh, uh, auxiliary common sum orbitals so basically density is given by uh, again uh, from the wave function one can construct and this is the kinetic energy and now one can uh, basically express the ground state energy in terms of common sum uh, eigenvalues which one can extract this way so this is uh, Okay, uh, there are various terms like energy term, you have an exchange correlation term, and this is the basic exchange and correlation. If we, we can find out the exchange uh, correlation potential, then one can construct the exchange correlation uh, energy as well. And again, uh, this is as I mentioned, this is a nonlinear Schrodinger equation which, whose potential depends upon eigenvalue of the equation. So one can uh, explicitly uh, uh, once an explicit form of exchange correlation is shown, the equation can be solved self consistently So now one need to find out what is the exchange and correlation energy. So Cohen and Sham, what they propose is that for a small volume of the system, one can consider the volume to be so small that its its, uh, its density, charge density can be assumed to be a constant within that volume and it, it has the uh, same exchange and correlation energy as one can uh, see in a, a homogeneous electron uh, gas at same density. So one can uh, compute the exchange and correlation energy from, uh, from the homogeneous electron gas at same density. So this, this is known as uh, local density approximation. So what is uh, local density approximation? The exchange correlation energy function, uh, depends only on the density. That's why this is known as local, or you can say local density or electron density. So that's why it is known as a local density approximation. So uh, approximate form of this exchange and correlation has been calculated by Kepperle and Elder, which is uh, uh, again parameterized by Pardew and Junger and more. Uh, Accurate parameterization was uh, uh, done by Orch and uh, Ballon. And uh, now we will see uh, when we do uh, in what regime this, uh, these uh, uh, local density approximation gives uh, good results. So one can see that in the limit of high density, or if density varies very slow, then this uh, uh, LDA is almost exact. And this is true for weakly correlated uh, materials like uh, semiconductors, semi metal, simple metals. LDA describes the structure and vib uh, vibrational property reasonably well. And uh, one, when one uh, computes the bond length, bulk modulus, on on frequency, and these uh, are uh, uh, quite accurate well within a few percentages, and this uh, matches very well with the experimental uh, values. But certainly there is a disadvantage of uh, this local density approximation in some situations. And if you see uh, when uh, these uh, LDA are known uh, uh, basically uh, uh, for estimating, uh, overestimating a cohesive energy, these, uh, the, the, if you see the lattice parameter, the uh, reduced lattice parameter or calculated lattice parameter will be uh, smaller uh, compared to the experimental value. And uh, again, they, they fail to reproduce the molecular binding energies, and these are unable to describe uh, certainly strongly correlated electron systems such as transition metal, etc. Et so the, the, this LD has been improvised by incorporating uh, uh, instead of just the density of uh, electron density, uh, the density gradient is also included in the exchange and correlation 
functional and now this exchange energy exchange correlation energy depends upon both uh, uh, electron density as well as gradient uh, of uh, electron density and there are several efforts uh, were made to improve this uh, gg functional there are uh, where and there are various form of uh, this uh, expense are proposed to improve this uh, uh, with the uh, agreement with the experiment and there are uh, quite a few uh, widely used gga functional exist like uh, Becke, Purdue, Wong, Purdue, Wolf, Angel, and so on and so forth. There are a few more uh, which, 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 are, which gives a more accurate result in a particular situation. So this is about the exchange and correlation, LDA and GGA, and then uh, certainly in certain situations, even GGA is uh, not able to give a reasonable uh, uh, result, uh, like in the strongly correlated system, uh, they are uh, can do uh, LDA plus U or GGA plus U uh, type of calculations. Now, uh, when, uh, in case of a periodic system or crystalline system, uh, uh, one can uh, use basically, uh, uh, okay, of course, okay. Uh, one need to basically expand the wave function in basis set. So one can use a localized basis set or one can use a plane wave basis set. Uh, so plane wave basis, basis set with the uh, pseudo potential has uh, some advantage for the uh, crystalline system and uh, these are the basically uh, uh, the plane wave are simple to use uh, orthonormal by construction so this can be handled easily in uh, uh, calculation on uh, of a periodic system and uh, as i mentioned these are essentially appropriate for periodic crystal where they provide uh, intuitive understanding as well as a simple algorithm for practical calculation uh, one thing uh, easily find out the convergence with respect to the basis side uh, basis set uh, only one parameter e cut is used i will uh, discuss little bit about uh, this one how this uh, only one parameter is used for uh, convergence of a uh, plane wave basis set and okay as we know this is the general form of a uh, plane wave and uh, this also provides uh, an additional advantage that one can do the fast Fourier transform and which provides flexibility one can uh, compute the uh, quantity in the Fourier space and then go to the real space and so one can easily go back and forth uh, in a uh, real space and reciprocal space if one uh, uses a plane wave uh, as a basis set for ex expanding the uh, electronic wave functions. So uh, if, if your uh, electron is free, certainly uh, one can represent by the plane wave, but for nearly free electron also, one can use uh, superposition of a small number of plane waves. But if your uh, system is uh, tightly bound, uh, as a tightly bound electrons, then one need to use a huge number of plane waves to get an adequate uh, expansion. So uh, when you have a tight binding uh, bound electron, basically your uh, density, electron density is localized. So construct that one, uh, you can say that uh, when you have, let's say you, you have a one peak and uh, now you want to represent in terms of a Fourier component. So certainly you require large number of Fourier uh, component to represent a localized peak. So that's why for a tightly bound electrons, uh, one requires a very huge number of uh, plane waves. Uh, so one can not use directly the full potential uh, when one uses the uh, plane wave as a basis set. So what is the uh, what is being done is instead of using uh, okay before going to come, okay uh, this is the basically uh, for the periodic system one can use uh, uh, block theorem and. Uh, which says in this case you have this uh, functional as the periodicity of a system that is the periodicity of your crystalline system r is a lattice vector and uh, if for all uh, 
if we if we uh, basically expand this uh, in terms of uh, plane waves then uh, uh, one can do the fourier transform and in case of fourier transform all uh, the uh, k vector are not required only certain k vectors uh, which is a reciprocal lattice, uh, lattice vectors are uh, sufficient to represent this uh, uh, periodic function so that's why when you want to expand the uh, plane wave in the, uh, when you want to uh, expand a wave function in terms of plane wave for the uh, periodic system then you require is a basically discrete number of uh, k points only and uh, as we know if you go higher higher uh, k point the contribution of those k point in this uh, function will be less so one need to basically define a particular uh, cut off of an, uh, k, k, k energy uh, basically uh, you are expanding this one so one need to limit at certain uh, point which is uh, in this simulation it is decided by the uh, energy cut off which is nothing but which gives a uh, may, uh, limit to uh, a k value which you use it so that's why so uh, for expanding you use only certain number of uh, plane waves and whose value is decided by the energy cutoff so this gives explanation for why uh, for uh, energy cutoff is used for the uh, basis set okay so in case of uh, plane wave as i mentioned uh, it is not uh, possible to use the full potential because uh, wave function will be very uh, localized and uh, it will be uh, difficult to represent in terms of a plane wave or one can say one would require large number of plane waves uh, to represent uh, those uh, wave function and that is uh, computationally very very expensive so uh, uh, basically pseudo potential approach was introduced and wh why this works is basically uh, almost all the physical property of the system is decided by the valency electrons only so if we can uh, basically uh, what we can do is we, uh, we can uh, construct a, a potential which from outside uh, looks same but from inside it's uh, different and uh, different so that's how you can see this is a, a very attractive potential if the solution will be of uh, this nature which has several nodes so representing this blue uh, carbon plane wave is very difficult but what one can do is when one can uh, uh, construct another wave function which is a smooth which can be easily represented by the plane in waves and which doesn't affect our physical property because the physical property will be governed by the uh, wave function or uh, charge density away uh, from some uh, cutoff uh, distance so when when one does this one so this is equivalent to uh, having a one uh, potential and this potential has a similar scattering uh, uh, property as the original so for all practical purposes the strong nucleus and four electron potential can be replaced by the potential which introduces same phase shift same scattering length as done by the full potential and this effective potential basically you are replacing full potential with some effective uh, potential and this is known as pseudo potential so pseudo potential is particularly uh, suited for the plane wave based uh, calculations so there are various kind of uh, potentials we have a non conserving uh, pseudo potential what it means is basically total charge inside the core region is preserved and those potentials are known as uh, non conserving uh, pseudo potentials but they have a uh, advantage as well as disadvantage the disadvantage is if you want to construct a non conserving potential for a first row element and a transistor element a transition uh, metals which have uh, basically 1s, 2p, or 3d valency electrons, then the potential constructed potential will be very hard. So you require a, a large number of plane wave. Uh, so you require large number of plane wave uh, to uh, represent the system, uh, or one can say the transferability of the pseudo potential requires large number of plane waves what is the meaning of transfer uh, transferability is basically uh, in a different chemical environment your uh, pseudo potential should be valid 
Uh, so there are several methods uh, has been applied to make these potential as smooth as possible so that one can uh, reduce the computational cost and one can do a more sim uh, uh, simulation which demands uh, more computation power. So Vanderbilt uh, in 1990 introduced uh, ultra soft shooter potential. So they relaxed the uh, uh, condition of non-conserving. Uh, so they allow the potential to be as soft as uh, pos uh, possible and uh, additional uh, charge is augmented at, uh, 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 at core for, uh, for the uh, calculation. Okay, uh, we are not going to the detail of this one. So there is a one uh, more approach, which is uh, now uh, it's more accurate and uh, it is uh, most widely used. That is known as uh, by which one can make uh, potential soft while uh, one can keep it accurate. And this is given by the projector augmented wave method. This is similar to the linear uh, augmented plane wave method and it can be used to treat first row and transition metal element by keeping full wave function. So in this case, basically, uh, the wave functions uh, inside the core, or you can say that all the wave functions are used inside the core, and outside the core, uh, uh, one can use uh, uh, basically plane wave. So this, uh, this method, with this method, one can use uh, uh, First row as well as transition metal element. Again, uh, in the detail, it uh, also uh, introduces projector and auxiliary localized function similar to the ultra soft pseudo potential. And this is uh, in the power across the full electron wave function are used, and all the integrals are evaluated by combining integral of smooth function spanning throughout the space and localized contribution evaluated by the radial integration over a small uh, like more intense sphere as is done in the augmented uh, plane view method. Now, uh, uh, when you see uh, the simulation, you see that one has to basically check the uh, convergence with respect to K point sampling. So what is the K point sampling? So uh, when uh, one can uh, calculate uh, any uh, properties like a density of state, charge density, or a matrix element, some uh, response function or anything, it, uh, Involves uh, integral integral over a trillion zone uh, like uh, this one. So one need to integrate this uh, quantity with uh, over the trillion zone in the reciprocal space. And uh, integral when you do in a, a simulation, it uh, this this is uh, basically replaced by the summation. Uh, this integral is replaced by the summation over uh, some special k uh, point only. So you have let's say this is your Leon zone. So uh, instead of using uh, all the k point in the Brillion zone, uh, one can invoke the symmetry and use uh, uh, only a small set of uh, k point in the in the Brillion zone. So this is known as irreducible Brillion zone, and one uses only a few set of uh, k point uh, in this uh, simulation. So that uh, uh, that reduces uh, this uh, computation very drastically. But certainly, one need to check uh, uh, the convergence of a physical property with respect to the num total number of k point, or you can say you are using the k point grid. So, if, uh, if one wants to calculate the quantity accurately, then one need to use a finer uh, finer k point mesh. Of course, it depends upon your uh, unit self. If your unit self is bigger, then your uh, brilliant zone will be smaller. If your unit self is smaller, then your uh, brilliant zone will be bigger. So once it, when it is bigger, one need to take large number of uh, K points inside the brilliant zone. Now, uh, now uh, this is the for the calculation of the electronic uh, wave function and one can as i mentioned one can uh, compute uh, basically a wave function using a Hohn-Sham theorem and now you have a wave function means electron density at the uh, ground state and now that can be used to construct a potential for the ion and now what we want to do is basically, if you have, let's say, 
some structure uh, which is from experiment and now we want to see whether this structure uh, not stable basically uh, what will be the equilibrium value of uh, interatomic distances its uh, in cell shape and size so what we have to do is we have to optimize the uh, structure and uh, based on this uh, quantum mechanical calculation uh, one can compute the force but one should be able to uh, uh, relax all the coordinate as well as uh, lattice parameter etc so this problem is known as structure optimization so uh, you start with this one so one uh, infinite periodic crystal is defined by atomic coordinate as well as by the uh, cell size and shape and this can be represented by this uh, equation. This equation, these, these are the basically three internal coordinate of atoms, and these are uh, basically nine variable lattices. So this this represents the complete crystal, uh, infinite periodic crystal. Now what we want is we want to relax. The, there is one possibility. One one can uh, keep the cell fixed and uh, relax the ion. So that is uh, basically move the ion as per their force so that uh, at equilibrium the force on any uh, atom or ion will be zero but uh, uh, when you are doing uh, uh, basically changing the pressure so the change in the pressure leads to uh, uh, different uh, configuration or uh, in that configuration this atomic arrangement also changes so it is uh, it is uh, uh, what you say just to give okay <clears throat> so one need to uh, relax the cell uh, shape of the cell and size of the cell as well uh, uh, how it is being done is basically similar to uh, uh, solving a uh, ionic motion problem this uh, lattice parameter is also uh, considered as a variable and uh, uh, anderson basically constructed a extended La lagrangian where the volume of the cell is also considered as a dynamic variable which allows the optimization of the cell vo volume during the doing the md simulation while cell shape remains fixed and uh, subsequently, Pernello and Rahman, they also incorporate a change in the size and shape of the cell as a dynamic variable. And by this one, uh, one can uh, do a simulation where uh, uh, lattice vector is also uh, uh, relaxed, which allows the evaluation of cell shape along with the size during the simulation. And this is further improved by uh, uh, Vantkovic, uh, uh, where instead of using a, a lattice vector, uh, they, they use the strain parameter and in, in the uh, uh, Lagrangian, and then this provides uh, uh, additional uh, benefit, uh, benefit. So in the Vanskovic method, it is possible to change size and shape of the cell uh, while preserving the point group symmetry of the system in the absence of temperature. So this is very important when you are doing the simulation, if you can uh, preserve the point group symmetry then your computation time is uh, greatly uh, reduced uh, one can uh, uh, do this uh, structure analysis and calculation uh, very quickly and this uh, uh, since you are imposing a point group symmetry so system will evolve uh, in such a way that uh, all the symmetry element of the point group uh, will be uh, present always. Uh, however, uh, uh, the system can, however, the system can go to a uh, uh, structure where the symmet more symmetry uh, elements are introduced. So it means that it can uh, go to a super group or asymmetry. As I already mentioned, this is uh, very useful when one calculated. Uh, forces using the first principle calculation and uh, another important point is when you do the structure uh, optimization this basically uh, this uh, drive the whole system to the nearest local minima uh, ultimately what we want is we want to find the global minima that uh, maybe uh, i will stand to uh, sometime
the last step. So how this structural optimization is done is uh, in the simplest form one can achieve by solving the damped second order equation of motion. So M this this is again you construct extended uh, Lagrangian and then solve this equation using your velocity uh, overlaid algorithm. Uh, this method is known as uh, damped molecular dynamics uh, and this method is very robust and it provides the fast convergence in cases where the initial configuration is very far from the uh, local minima and there are various methods by which one can do structural optimization another one is a conjugate gradient and which is more reliable in the difficult uh, situation what we mean by difficult is basically if you want to relax uh, cell shape and size and uh, everything then this conjugate gradient method works well so this is used to relax the ion into their instantaneous uh, ground states. The ions are moved along the force uh, direction and uh, this method uh, requires basically line minimization which is performed in several steps. First uh, one constructed trial step uh, is done uh, in the force direction then energy and force are calculated. These are used to determine the again correct step for approximate energy minima by interpolations and after the character step uh, one uh, again calculate the force and energy uh, and check whether the force have a significant component parallel to the previous search and this uh, process is uh, repeated till you get uh, energy minima. Uh, if, uh, if you want to do the structuralization close to the energy minima one can do the quasi Newton and uh, Newton algorithm is very useful but uh, if it it is far from uh, the minima then it fails. So here are the, some of the uh, quantities which we can get from uh, which we can get from uh, these simulations. So you start with the uh, when you do the, the simulation what you can get is basically you can get a, a, a pressure versus volume that is equation of state one can construct and these equation of state can be uh, compared with the experimental equation of state. Uh, if, uh, if you can do this uh, for uh, uh, various stable structures then one can uh, uh, find the equation of state in different phases like here you see that this, this, uh, uh, this, this is the ambient structure and this is the equation of the state in the ambient structure uh, this pressure new structure as a lower uh, energy so this is the equation of state or pressure volume uh, in the next uh, stable phase but uh, how do we come to know that uh, this is a stable phase so as i already men mentioned what one uh, does is basically one computes the total energy or enthalpy uh, uh, with uh, with the different pressures so uh, you plot then uh, this uh, enthalpy versus uh, uh, pressure of a different phase. So one need to basically do a calculation on uh, various possible uh, various possible structures and then compare. Uh, may I interrupt? There yes. is some focusing issue. Your projections are not very clearly visible. Can you switch on AC? Some vibration is now it is coming proper, sir. Mm, no, for example, your first. Top left one, your line of the CMCM is not visible. Your axis is not visible. Yeah, yeah, he could see. So why, why should? Maybe I go back and come. It happened two, three, two, three projections uh, earlier, but I then I thought it would correct itself, but apparently it has not. And previous slides. See here also, I can't easily reach tissue by time. 
now uh, because i know it so i know it is so white type you have written but yeah in here also it is not visible by ppt is okay but in youtube it is not coming proper what is yeah, so issue? some folks say issue is there because of uh, bandwidth bandwidth probably so can we wait for some time maybe i think it would be appropriate will sir it seems there is a bandwidth issue so maybe we we can wait for 5 minutes mm -hmm. how many more projections you have uh, so, uh i think uh, 7 8 Is it better now, sir? I now it is better. Now it is better. Yes. Sir, yeah. After some time, it will be better. Okay, it will get updated. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, this is an. Uh, Where uh, it was uh, calculated using a uh, first principle uh, simulation like uh, equation of state in uh, various uh, phases CMCM, CSOI type, and uh, MCACL2. And uh, depending upon the structural stability, one can uh, uh, construct a, a full uh, pressure volume behavior and uh, 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 what do you say, in a different pressure region. So uh, how one concludes or how one uh, can determine which one, which is uh, the structure will be stable. So, so one, what one can do is one can take a large number of possible structures and then do a total energy calculation and construct an enthalpy versus pressure curve. And uh, the lowest enthalpy, uh, we know the structure which have a lowest enthalpy is a stable structure and uh, this uh, this structure uh, 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 most of the time uh, it will be uh, basically the experimental structure but in some cases because of the kinetic hindrance uh, the, the structure which is observed in uh, uh, experiment may be metastable structure so that's how uh, one can uh, use utilize this uh, calculation to determine whether uh, this the the structure will be stable or not and this uh, one can use uh, this uh, method to predict uh, uh, different structure in different uh, compound here in a, uh, here is an uh, example where uh, you can see clearly that uh, uh, the enthalpy when you uh, construct enthalpy with pressure so you see that uh, the other structure uh, has a lower enthalpy just above 3 gp or so however when you do the structural relaxation calculation uh, on an ambient structure it uh, continue in the same structure till a uh, particular pressure and at this pressure this uh, potential energy curve modifies and uh, there is no uh, barrier between these two phases so one 
uh, what we have observed is basically uh, uh, basically the ambient structure uh, transformed to a high pressure structure in the structural precision calculation itself. Uh, this is not uh, always uh, possible when you do the high pressure uh, because uh, because of two things. One is uh, uh, you are doing a, a simulation where the symmetry is <laughs> restrained, and the other thing is uh, the other structure may be uh, well separated by the kinetic value. So this this is uh, uh, an example where we, where we have done uh, structure relaxation. And this provides uh, basically gives the insight into the transition mechanism as well. So uh, uh, to describe this one, what you see is basically you start with the structure where it, let's say this is phosphorus, which is in four coordinated. When you increase the pressure, it becomes six coordinated in a symmetric way. And then this uh, its energy is further relieved uh, uh, or uh, reduced by uh, basically distortion in the structure. So this uh, simulation can be used to uh, uh, basically understand what uh, is the governing mechanism of uh, structural uh, transition. Again, this is uh, the various synapse sort uh, from uh, those simulation and uh, uh, very, uh, the movement of the various atoms so that uh, 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 one can explain the transition mechanism. So I'm not going into the detail of this transition mechanism. Of course, one can uh, construct a phonon uh, dispersion uh, that I have not discussed, like has to be done using a density functional perturbation theory that we have not talked about, but one can do uh, using that density functional perturbation theory, one can construct the full prion john. One, what is being done is basically one computes the uh, dynamical matrix and then uh, that gives the elastic constant not elastic force constant uh, uh, and those four constants are used to construct a uh, phonon dispersion in the uh, desired uh, direction or one can or you can say that one can construct the phonon dispersion in the whole brilliant zone and this uh, one can use to investigate whether this uh, uh, whatever structure you are considering is uh, dynamically stable or not. If it is uh, dynamically unstable, you will see some uh, frequencies in a negative direction. So that uh, gives that uh, that gives a clear indication that your structure is dynamically uh, unstable. Though it, uh, its energy may be lower, but uh, it is dynamically unstable. One can also compute the uh, elastic property uh, with a at various uh, pressure using uh, this uh, first principle simulations. And these simulations also can help in interpreting the uh, Raman scattering uh, data. Here, in a, here is an example. So this uh, dotted line gives the experimental uh, curve and this solid line is the computed uh, non resonant Raman scattering cross-section using the first principle simulation. And one can see this, this is uh, uh, at ambient condition, it matches very well. Uh, in fact, in our study, this this uh, this is used to this uh, this uh, calculation of non-resonant Raman scattering cross section is used to determine the high pressure phase. So this is the experimental data at high pressure, and without this simulation, it is uh, almost impossible to uh, basically identify whether. Uh, this, uh, these various peaks belongs to the same phase or some different phase. So when we, uh, when we did this uh, simulation in a CMCM particular phase, you can see there are peaks which are matching with the experimental. So this gives some uh, idea that uh, this uh, structure may be transforming to a, a CMCM phase uh, or a particular phase in case of Raman scattering itself. The last point uh, which I would like to mention is basically uh, uh, when we are doing high pressure, what uh, we are interested in is basically uh, uh, we want to know the structure at those pressure and temperature conditions. So uh, most of the time uh, one can uh, uh, deduce the structure based on uh, various knowledge or from the data itself. 
but uh, when uh, you want to know the structure at uh, uh, the condition where the data uh, may be not uh, very clean because two or three phase may exist or Q range is limited that is the case most of the time in case of high pressure then one can use the crystal structure search uh, uh, methods and there are various uh, methods uh, like uh, meta dynamics simulated angling basin hopping minima hopping and nowadays uh, this evolutionary algorithm is uh, uh, basically quite successful in predicting the uh, crystal structure at high pressure and high temperature uh, so in case of evolutionary algorithm what is being done is basically similar to the uh, Darwin's uh, evolutionary theory. So you start with the, some uh, gas structure and then that is optimized using uh, first principle or any structural optimization software. And of course, uh, one need to define various uh, criteria li like uh, uh, bond length. There is a, there, there, there could be a large number of structures which are unrealistic. So those are not uh, considered. So only realistic uh, structures are considered and then uh, one does the energy minimization and then uh, one introduce, uh, introduces uh, uh, basically uh, mutation uh, as well as uh, one constructs the generation by mixing these uh, uh, outcome or stable structures. And with the, uh, this evolution, uh, evolution means uh, basically generation and mutation, one can uh, basically search the, the global minima for a particular structure. Uh, I think I should stop here. Uh, thank you very much. So if anybody has any question, they can uh, write to me or uh... Uh, um, if, uh, anyway, once you are done with the talk, talk to the coordinator that you are last five or seven projections continue to be blurred. So they should make sure that your projections are sharp. Okay. I mean, they, they can probably go through this and see whether it, it got loaded properly or not. Uh, we are not able to hear you, sir. I, I reiterated the same thing that your last five, seven projections. Okay, sir. They continue to be blurred curves could not be seen. So in the uploaded talk, they should make sure those curves are proper. Okay. So, Sir, uh, once uh, it get, uh, 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 we, we stop streaming now. YouTube will generate uh, another uh, video, compress this and then uh, things will be clear. Uh, yes. So Things will become better? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you.